This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Immaculate is not a movie I thought I would make a video about, I'll be honest. I mean, yeah, it's a slow month, but even then, it just didn't seem like it had the pizzazz to warrant a whole video. But then I saw it and I felt things, and I saw the reviews for it, and I decided I needed to get some things off my chest about this movie. So let's dive in. Immaculate, otherwise known as the Sydney Sweeney Nun movie, is about a woman who joins a convent in Italy and what happens when a bunch of weird stuff goes down and she tries to escape. What kind of weird stuff? You gotta go watch the movie. You gotta watch the movie. I'll come clean. Horror movies of this flavor, be it anything to do with religion or Catholicism or nuns, haven't been hitting it out of the park as of recent. I mean, just last October, Exorcist Believer proved itself to be literally the worst movie of that year, so I can't really say I was on the edge of my seat for Immaculate. When I go into mainstream horror films with these themes, I'm expecting 90% dullness and 10% cheap jump scares. Bottom of the barrel horror, really. And Immaculate is definitely some of that, don't get me wrong, but there's something about this movie that stands on its own. See, I feel like when it comes to mainstream horror these days, and, and I've talked about this many times, it feels like your movie either has to be in this more traditional cheap jump scare category that performs disgustingly well at the box office despite always being deeply unfulfilling, or it has to be in this A24 type elevated horror category, which is its own bag of worms. Immaculate stands somewhere in the middle of these two categories. It's a step above the garbage, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. And I like that about it. It's not a perfect movie, but I like what it's doing. One thing I really like about this is that sexy runtime. 89 minutes is amazing. Being just shy of 90 is exactly where you want to be. Now there are some cases to be made that this film would be a little bit better had it been maybe 10 minutes longer. Maybe you would pack a bit more punch. I mean, yeah, it does feel extremely straightforward and plotty. It feels like every scene serves the plot. There's not a lot of moments for character growth. But let's just put that aside for a moment and appreciate that a mainstream horror movie gets in and gets out and doesn't overstay its welcome. I'm definitely not one of those anti three hour runtime guys, don't get me wrong here. I just think for a movie like this, for a fun little horror movie, a shorter runtime really works. You arrive at the inevitable insanity way sooner, and you get to enjoy it before it gets stale. Let's talk about the main draw of the film, though. Arguably the most important part of the film. Uh, Sydney Sweeney. My thoughts on Sydney Sweeney and her work has been all over the place at this point. I thought she was one of the strongest actors in Euphoria. She gave a super underrated performance in reality. I thought she was awful in Anyone But You. And I thought she walked away safe from Madam Web. All that to say, I never know how I'm gonna feel about her going into a movie. And I regret to inform you she is one of my least favorite parts about this. On one hand, sure, for a film where basically every scene has her in it, she does manage to carry the film and keep it compelling, but I think her more low-key moments near the beginning of the film are ridiculously out of place and odd. There are only a few moments where I'm not thinking, oh hey, it's Sydney Sweeney. Like there's this one scene where she walks in and it's supposed to be creepy and she's like, ciao? Which I think is supposed to be funny. But, uh, yeah, it just, it just made me laugh. But if you've seen the film already, you're probably more interested in how I felt about her later in the film. And I thought she was fine. With the exception of one standout scene that I'll talk about in a second, she never really feels like she goes any further than she did in something like Euphoria. She gets the job done, sure, but it's never on the same level as someone like... I don't know, Marilyn Burns in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which feels like the most obvious inspiration here. The standout scene I'm talking about, which I won't spoil too much, is the scene attached to the still doing all the heavy lifting for the promo of this movie, the one where she's covered in blood. There's a lot of yelling and a lot of screaming. You probably see that coming. And while it's certainly intense, hard not to be when it's just screaming, it does seem a little excessive in the moment. Her scream doesn't have that like deep rooted terror that it needs to have in that moment. It kind of, it's kind of just a long scream. In some ways, it feels like she's trying to do whatever Mia Goth did at the end of Pearl, where it's like a really long take and, and it's trying to showcase her acting, but this just doesn't have the same oomph. But her performance aside, I do think this is one of the more interesting Sydney Sweeney roles that she's done. I don't know. I do think there are some layers to the fact that she's looked at a certain way by a lot of people. She's become one of the most sexualized public figures. I think it's interesting how the film is kind of about a woman who, in a sense, loses control of her body and how the lines become blurred of who really controls it in the film, especially in a religious context. Don't get me wrong. It never goes anywhere too profound with these themes. It's not saying anything that's going to change 
change the game here. But I do think Sidney Sweeney, of all people, being the lead for a film like this, even being a producer, is interesting. It says way more than a lot of her other roles, and I think it's cool. Sort of unrelated, but it's not so subtle pro-choice moments in the back half are dealt with in a ridiculous, but again, interesting way. Speaking of shocking moments, let's talk about the actual horror in the film. My thoughts are so all over the place on how this film goes about its scares. Like I mentioned, the film is not safe from the jump scare stuff. The beginning of this especially has the most random and unearned jump scares out there. It's like so bad that I thought we outgrew this kind of stuff, but I guess not. But on a separate note, no matter how cheap the execution, I do always have to give a film credit if it makes me squirm. There's vomit and blood and incisions in this movie, and it, they all made me squirm. It, they really did. When it does decide to go for it, the film is properly gross. I wish it went for it more often. I can't even express how frustrating it is that there are a handful of insanely cool moments on paper here that feel lousily executed when they play out. There's a scene with a tongue that just looks so goofy and absurdly fake, even though on paper it's a great moment. Another moment with a foot that ends up the same way, very cool on paper goofy as hell when it happens in the movie, and the root of a lot of these issues is the CGI. This is not an original or interesting complaint anymore, so I'm not going to dwell on it for too long, but for a movie that comes really close to capturing that fun popcorn horror experience that feels unique to the 80s, the actual scares and body horror is so underwhelming. I can't imagine how much more interesting and disgusting it would all look with practical effects. Uh, it could have been so much better. Listen, there are loads of kinks here, tons of moments that don't work, that could have been way cooler than they ended up being. Sydney Sweeney has been better, absolutely. But in general, when I take a step back, I, I did have fun with this movie. I cannot deny that. I actually think Anyone But You is a good film to compare this with. That was a movie that had tons of clear issues, but was meant to be something you were just supposed to let loose and have fun with. But the issues in it were too damn annoying for me to feel the romance or the comedy. But Immaculate, despite its many flaws, Laws, still kind of worked for me in the end. I got what I wanted out of it. It's fun, it'll hold your attention, but at the same time, I do think its best ideas deserved a better movie. So those are my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Go watch Immaculate, inform your own opinion, and before you head out, I would love to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to go to build a website and make that idea of yours come to life. Squarespace has this wonderful feature called Fluid Engine, which is a next-generation website design system that allows you to customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. You guys know me, I'm a film guy and I wanna be a filmmaker and to do so, I need a portfolio, which is why I love their video collection feature, which allows me to host video content, organize my video library, and showcase my content on beautiful video pages for desktop or mobile. Not to mention my favorite feature, which is their asset library, which allows you to upload, organize, and access all your content from one central hub and use it across the Squarespace platform. There's so much to love about Squarespace, and the best part about it all is that you can go to squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch that beautiful website of yours, go to squarespace.com slash Karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching this video. And guys, I'm gonna see you in the next one. I, I better see you in the next one.